Hello folks, Todd Halleck coming to you today from Logan, Utah, talking to you a little bit about the Corporate Transparency Act, more particularly the Beneficial Ownership Information Report that most uh, small and mid-sized businesses will need to file uh, going forward. Uh, if your company was in, in existence on December 31, 2023 or before, you will have until January 1 of 2025 to get that report filed. If your business was started between January 1, 2024 and December 31, 2024, you'll have 90 days to get that initial or initial filing filed. And if your company uh, is formed following January on January 1, 2025 or later, you'll have 30 days to get that initial report in. So what is uh, the Corporate Transparency Act? and um, the Beneficial Ownership Information Report. Why are we doing that now? Well, it's a 2020 law that finally went into effect on January 1 of 2024 that is aimed at uh, uh, benefiting law enforcement and attempting to curtail money laundering, financial support of terrorism, and things of that nature. And so unless you qualify for one of the exemptions, your company will need to file. And so I thought today that I would walk us through uh, how to get on this website and file that report. And so I'm going to share my screen here with you. And you'll see I'm at the website fincen.gov forward slash BOI. This is where you want to go to find out information about uh, the new requirements as well as to file that uh, FinCEN, or excuse me, that BOI report. Um, and we'll uh, put this, uh, a link to this uh, below. Um, you'll note when you get to this page, you have a, a couple of options in regards to, to this filing here. You can file the report or you can create a FinCEN ID. If you're going to be filing multiple reports as a company applicant or because you have multiple companies and you're the beneficial owner on multiple companies, I would strongly recommend getting the benefit, or excuse me, the FinCEN ID that will allow you then to, and I'll show you this in a second, to just put a number in as opposed to, um, as opposed to having to upload information every time. So if you want that, you'll have to create an account with login.gov. It's pretty straightforward. It walks you through. You have to provide some information, copy of an appropriate photo ID, and then they issue you the FinCEN ID number that you can then use going forward. So if you're gonna, if you're ready to file your your BOI report, first thing you do is click that that top button there, and then you have a couple of options here: BOI report or the Bank Secrecy Act. This is what we're wanting today: the BOI reporting. So click get started, and you can do this as a PDF. I'm going to walk us through today this online uh, uh, option. So. Again, click prepare, hit agree, and the first thing you have to choose is what kind of report is this? Is this an initial report? Is this a correcting a prior report? Is this updating a prior report? Or is this a, a newly exempt entity? And I, I do want to remind people that if uh, you once you have filed, you don't have to file this annually, but once you do file, if there's any change of the information that you've reported, you need to up that, update that within 30 days. And remember that there are $500 per day fines and potential criminal violations for failing to do this. So it's important that you get this done. Today, we're gonna to focus on this initial report because that's where most of us are now. So you click that initial report, it fills in today's date, gives you a little notice here from the government about how they're reducing uh, paper. And if you want to or need to receive a FinCEN ID for your company or you're a foreign pooled investment vehicle, you'll need to choose one of these. Um, but let's assume that you don't and we'll move on to uh, putting in first off your company legal name. That's going to be the name that's on your articles of incorporation, your certificate of organization, whatever that formation document is. If your company also uses a alternative name such as a DBA, you need to add that and you can add more than one and you would do that right here. Um, the first thing you need to do after that is provide identification information. And so that's either going to be an EIN, 
uh, SSN, TIN, or a foreign identification number. And then you will put that. So if you're if you have an EIN for your company, you would select EIN and then you would include that number in there. And then you would, if it's a foreign filing, you would indicate the, the country, the jurisdiction from where it's from. Um, and you also will need to uh, determine where your, com your company was registered. So United States of America, and if you're a, uh, an Alabama company, you would select that. And then you will put in your at physical address. It can't be a PO box. It's got to be a physical address, the city, the country, the state, the zip code, right? Uh, next thing, then we hit next. And now we've got the company applicant. And if this is an existing company, and what that means is a company that existed on or before December 31, 2023. And then you would click this button. If it is something that's been created on January 1 or after, then you're going to need to do this company applicant. And that's going to be the person or persons who filed the information to create the company. But for companies that existed prior to January 1, you would click this box. And this can get a little bit weird because it then says, oh, this is going to disable this. Well, that's actually what you want to do in this case. So you hit yes. Then you don't need to worry about filling out any of the company applicant information. If you weren't an existing company, again, depending on the number of applicants you had, you would fill out the applicant information. And that's going to be similar to what we need to do here, which is the beneficial ownership information. So one thing to be mindful of is it's a little bit deceptive in that you fill this out and you could hit next and you could not quite get it right. And if you have more than one beneficial owner, you need to add all of those folks in. And a beneficial owner, this is where this gets a little tricky. Who's our beneficial owner? And if you have trusts, if you have multiple levels of companies, we really need to work through that to determine who the beneficial owners of this particular company are. Uh, a beneficial owner is going to be someone with 25% or more interest in the company or who exercises substantial control, like a CEO, a manager of an LLC. Those people may not be owners at all, but or they may not have 25%, but they are going to be treated as beneficial owners, and you would have to fill in the information for them. If you have the uh, FinCEN number, you just fill that in right here. If you're wholly owned by an exempt entity, then you're going to be clicking this box. And just note along the way, you can um, create uh, or, or, or click this little button here and it will give you some additional information. It, there are also fields where it can take you out to some really helpful FAQs and things of that nature that the Department of Treasury has put on. So with the beneficial owners, you'll need their name. If you don't have the FinCEN number, you'll need their last name, first name, middle name, um, and uh, date of birth. And then you'll need their address, uh, the, the city, uh, country, state, zip code. And then here's the next kind of big thing that you'll need to be aware of. And that is you have to provide a personal identification number. And that's going to come off of one of these four documents, a state issued driver's license, a state, local or tribal issued ID, a U.S. passport or a foreign passport. So you'll select which one you're going to do. You'll put in the identifying number and again, the the uh, jurisdiction, state, local, tribe. And then you have to include a copy of that image. And right here, it'll tell you what kind of uh, image you can do. A JPEG, a PNG, or a PDF are the formats that are allowed. So you could potentially just take a picture of it on your iPhone and then, um, and then upload it here. This is why if you have multiples of these companies, you may want to consider a FinCEN ID because you have to do this on every company. And you might want to make sure you gather all the beneficial owner information you need when you're doing this because you can't save the information 
if you don't finish and submit, you have to go back and start over. So make sure you have all of your information together before you start. Uh, and then once you're finished, you do your email, sign it electronically and agree here, do the CAPTCHA thing and then submit your report. And if you've done it right, you're done. If you haven't, then you're gonna have to correct it. Like I say, it's a pretty straightforward filing system. The tricky part is gonna be analyzing your individual businesses to determine A, whether you're exempt, and then B, whether or not, or excuse me, who the beneficial owners are on any particular company. Um, I hope you found that helpful going through this today. Uh, can't encourage you enough to get this taken care of. Don't wait till the end of the year. Uh, there are folks out there like Halleck and Halleck that will provide help. We're, we're uh, going to be providing that to our existing clients and, and those folks we work with. And so if you have an attorney or accountant, maybe those folks will, will help you as well. Uh, there are some other uh, services for a fee that will file these for you. So anyways, there's lots of information out there about this. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's, you know, really important that you get this taken care of. And if you have any questions, make sure you're seeking out competent advice as always in getting your questions answered. I hope that's been helpful for you today. We'll talk to you again soon.